As we learned in the last lesson, one of the great things about the World Wide Web is that there's so much stuff out there. The problem with it, as we also learned, is there's a lot of stuff that varies from thing to thing. So this lesson is really about how to look at variations in the data, what we think of as variant data. That is, two different ways to think about the same thing, or three, or four, maybe five. There are many different ways to think about and talk about the same piece of underlying information. So let's think about how we would get to the reality of that. For example, a simple thing is, how big is Earth? What is the circumference of our planet? Well, if you think about it for a second, the Earth is not exactly spherical. It's not a perfect round ball. So it depends on how you measure the Earth. Do you measure around the equator or do you measure around the poles? Because, look, the answers differ. If you measure one way versus the other, it's a somewhat different number. Now, admittedly, it's not a lot different. It's pretty spherical. But take into account the context of the thing you're trying to determine. That is, are there other ways to measure the same thing? Are there other ways to account for that information? What do other people think about when they think about that piece of information? One way to think about this is to keep in mind the sources of that information. So for example, if you're trying to measure the circumference of the Earth, would you trust NASA or would you trust Mr. Greenblatt's sixth grade class? It depends. Think about where your information is coming from. I love Mr. Greenblatt, but you never know. So if you read, for example, a blogger who, re who wrote something like this, that 63% of all kids look at funny pictures of cats each day. Well, let's think about that for a second. Where does that number come from? Where does a 63% number come from? How is it measured? Who was it measured over? Bloggers. OK, that's a big group. Which bloggers? Bloggers in India? Bloggers in Brazil? Bloggers, bloggers in the United States? What was the source of that information? That is, where was it published originally? Is it just somebody else's blog? Or was it published in a well-known, un understood, and reputable newspaper or journal? And finally, how is it measured? If someone just tells you it's 63%, how do you know that that was measured? Did they go out and count all the bloggers in the world? That seems unlikely. So when you're thinking about trying to understand variations among data, realize that that's an inherent property. A lot of data comes in multiple forms under multiple assumptions, under multiple data measuring paradigms. Now, let's think about this. If you're doing a query on Google, you may be tempted to do a query like this. Average length of an octopus is 18 inches. Don't do that. Don't bake in the answer into your query. Now let me show you this. So here on Google, if I do a query like average length of octopus 18 inches. So what I'm doing, remember, is I'm searching for these words, average length octopus 18 inches. Now, one of the things you'll see as you scan through these results is a lot of 18 inches. So here we have uh, something down here. An octopus can grow to about 18 inches long. The average length of an octopus is 18 inches. You see what's happening? We've assumed the answer in the query. That's what I mean by baking it in. We've asked the question implying the answer. We are leading the witness. So instead, what I would do is something like this. I would use this second form of the query, something where I'm asking for average length in double quotes because I want that phrase. I don't want average separated from length. And I want the word octopus, and I don't want anything else. So let's try that. Average length octopus. Now, we've gotten a lot better answers here, I think, because here, the average length of an octopus is 60 centimeters or 2 feet. The average length could be 85 centimeters, average length up to 10 feet. So now you start to see that there's an enormous range in the size of these octopi that can vary from tiny to very large. So when you're doing a query, be careful not to assume too much. Don't assume you know the answer. That's why you're doing the query to begin with. So think about this. As you go through your normal searches, think about if your query is biasing towards one result or another. Think about where the information comes from and think about whether or not you can believe it. That is, 
the subject of our last lesson, is it credible? Remember that many different kinds of questions can have very different answers. For example, how many countries are there in the world right now? It depends. It depends on when you ask that question. So the answer from last year is not the same as the answer from this year because countries come and countries go. Not big countries, but little countries often will form, they'll dissolve, and so the answer will vary over time. So be aware of that when you do your searches. And go ahead and click on the next arrow and do this activity.